So this is a short film to show where I am with the Bentley so far. Very excitingly, as you can imagine, there are two versions of this film. So one has some commentary, one has music on it. There were some comments that uh, some people liked the music, some people didn't. So you have a choice now. If you don't like what you're hearing, go and watch everyone. So engine-wise, when it turned up, the engine seemed to be seized. Uh, well, there was certainly no movement, at least, on any of the bits at the front. Um, so I took out the spark plugs and I put some of this magic stuff that was recommended to me. Penetrating catalyst, blaster since 1957. Shove loads of that in um, and left that for two or three weeks. Put the spark plugs back in afterwards so uh, keep a bit of condensation out. And then there's multiple belts at the front. So I then took the belts off. I had to release the dynamo. I had to release the uh, power steering pump, I think that is. And that then released the belts. I didn't cut the belts because I try not to damage stuff because then I've actually got a bit of a template in the future for working out what it is I've got to put back on. Um, and it all seemed fairly solid. But then I managed to get this rotating. So the, um, the pump fan now rotates freely. So that just, I think was just slightly jammed. I need to have a look inside obviously, but it's not too bad. Um, and then with some decent gloves on, I actually managed to turn the engine over as well with the spark plugs out. So that looks pretty good. I then put a bit more of the catalyst stuff in there and then rotated it a couple of rotations to make sure it's smeared all over the place, shove the spark plugs back in. And hopefully that'll be good until we actually try and start it at some point. Now, body wise, there is a lot of plastic. So it had fiberglass front wings. There were S3 wings and it was an S2. So they don't actually fit an S3 because the grill is a different height. So I took them off, um, but you will see there is a lot of plastic in the body, which I need to sort out. So you can see the rear wings, the bottom element is all just fiberglass that's been riveted on and then glassed over. And then it sort of seems to peter out at this point here. Um, but all the sills are fiberglass as well. And what we've got with sills is, you can see it's riveted on, riveted along down here. So this is all metal, which is fine. But then it's been cut off down here and that's all, all just fiberglass. The same at the front. So you can see again, I mean, it's, it's much worse in terms of where the metal is, that's fairly obvious, but you can see it's all riveted on here. So then continues on, and then you can see what you've got. So you've actually got a fire glass here, chopped off body, chopped off body in there, all fire, fire glass down to there. This is the brackets attached to nothing, which is attached onto the bottom, um, bottom mount there. Um, and then it will see, you know, you've got to rust these elements here at the top actually goes through in that area there. Not too bad, the majority of this, but then round the mount is really bad. So the shape's there, which is the key thing, but actually the uh, integrity of it is, is limited. It's not doing a great deal. Pretty much the same the other side, although uh, a bit worse in terms of this front area. So all this is missing. All missing here. The mount, the mount is there and the mount, well, I mean, it feels as though it's had some weld onto it it's certainly not attached as well as it could so underneath so this is at the back just the opposite side of where i marked up um, on the on the rear wing so you can see the original wing is there or some elements were there um, and then you have the fiberglass one is put underneath like that we're going to move away from there and so the rear chassis member probably the one, one of the worst bits so it's a classic bit to go because it's under the battery box um but it has been uh mended previously so different to what the original was and it's been mended to keep it going so if it hadn't been mended to keep it going it might not exist now so you have to be grateful for that um but it needs some serious rework on that potentially a whole new bit needs to go in which is a bit tricky because it's um it's quite key with that mount at least on it and there's another mount quite close as well Make sure it gets in the right place. So looking down the car from the back now, uh, you've also got the rear axle diff, if you like. And uh, we've got the fuel tank, which is the blue bit, which seems all right. We obviously need to have a look at it. Uh, that's the center body mount. So there's, I can't remember how many mounts there are, I don't know, 11, 12, something like that. There's quite a lot. Um, and a few of them are coming out. And then if we go along a bit to the sill, you can see, so that is the back of the fiberglass 
Um, so that's what's left of the original sills at the very back, just where the rear wheel arches start coming in. So you've got fiberglass, glass, fiber glass at the bottom, and then dust and remnants of sill in there. So that yeah, big chunks of metal in there. Uh, so that all needs to come off in terms of the fiberglass sill. We need to have a look what there is. I mean, you can buy the panels, uh, but I do have a cunning plan to get away from that, hopefully, depending on how, um, how good welding is, etc. It's a similar story the other side. So this is now the right-hand side. Um, so you've got the, I think that's the fuel pump in the foreground, and you've got the back of the sills, and they aren't too bad, but they're still clearly needing, needing some love. The whole plan with this project is to do it absolutely brilliantly, nut and bolt restoration, um, but not to spend an absolute fortune doing it. So I've got to be slightly intelligent about which bits I'm going to be chopping off and, and where I get other bits from and how, how I go about putting them on properly. So inside I've not done a great deal. I gave it a bit of a clean, took out the wedding flowers. Um, I've not touched the headlining. I did look under the seats, see if there's anything exciting, but mainly just dust and pens. Um, front seats are still in. The only thing I've started to do is, as part of trying to get the body off, which is the next step, is to start taking the steering column out. So there seems to be a panel around where the steering column goes through the bulkhead, um, which is where the uh, brake pedal is as well. Uh, and I've got most of the screws out around that panel. I then got the screws out around the, the steering column itself. Um, and then what I'm doing is taking the steering wheel off. So I'm, I'm filming all this other stuff to put on the um, time lapse so you can see that. But I've then got to work my way down and take all these elements off. So the, uh, the Prindle stick, as I'd call it, right through so I can get to the steering column as is and get that out. And what I've been told is it's better not to split it from the steering box. So there's the, all this chunk here is the steering box. And that is connected by these hydraulic hoses through to what I think is the pump there and then the other bit that's underneath down here. And so I've started taking the hoses off um, and getting ATF everywhere and working out how to disconnect it. You've then got a bottom, bottom arm which goes to the steering system. So I've got the, managed to get that apart. I've also then got a torsion arm to stop the twisting of the steering box, it's only held in, it's held in on a on a vertical spindle. So I've undone the torsion arm as well, um, and then yeah, I've got to, so taking these hoses out of the way then suddenly makes the whole vehicle look a fair chunk simpler in the engine bay. But the next step is I've got to work my way down from the steering wheel um, on the obviously in the cabin until that's all clear. Take out that bottom panel and then try and remove all of this stuff downwards. So it may need me to lift the vehicle up a bit higher. Hopefully that was interesting and useful and you got to listen to either guitar music or a commentary as suits your likes. Please like and subscribe because that's really useful. If I got anything wrong or said something stupid, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I will try and film as much as possible and certainly on the time lapse as well. Um, although the, the engine was a bit frustrating because I didn't expect it to, be, to actually turn over and it did turn over when I um, tried it by hand. So that was really useful. It may be that I found another vehicle that I'm going to go and have a look at which is tucked away in a garage similar to this so if I can if that if that does come off then I shall show that on here as well so please keep following and all comments welcome